Sometimes you could be listening to someone practicing their instrument and you can clearly hear something being out of place or them making a mistake, even if you're not an expert on the piece that they're playing. This is what we're interested in this paper, score independent detection of conspicuous mistakes in piano performances. I'm very happy to be presenting this work on behalf of my co-authors. And this work was conducted during an internship at Yamaha in Hamamatsu, Japan. With this idea in mind, let's take an example which sounds like a typical piano practice. Even as most of you might not know this snippet, you were probably still able to hear the mistake indicated by the red area, which is an example of a hesitation in playing. And actually, there is a basis for such a thing that not all deviations from a music score are equally apparent to listeners as mistakes. Some of the findings of this study were that the higher the listener familiarity with the piece, the more mistakes that they detect. That's why only the mistakes that were spotted by all annotators, who vary in their familiarity with the music, are considered conspicuous. And actually, it was found that only 38% of all deviations fell under that category. Another important finding is that there are shared traits between those mistakes, suggesting that they could be learned. So for this example, if this MIDI role is input to our system, we'd like it to output high error probabilities for the areas in the red boxes, since they correspond to harmonically conflicting note insertions, abrupt pauses or repetitions, etc. And we'd like it to ignore the areas in the blue boxes, since these are deviations that are harmonically very sensible, such that no one who doesn't know the score so well would detect them anyway. So now that our goals are clear, we try to build a mistake detector for standard piano repertoire of beginner to intermediate students. We need to collect data to support our goal. We need MIDI piano rolls with performance mistakes that are locally annotated in the sites of obvious mistakes so that our models can learn from them. We gather first the site reading data, which are 103 site reading performances and performance data, which is 245 run through performances of classical piano pieces. And these run throughs are not perfect, so they include repetitions and they include salient mistakes. And finally, we have two performances of each of the 25 etudes in Borg Mola Opus 100. The first two are used for train validation and test, and the last one is only used for testing. And we ask two annotators to label three collections, what is obviously an error. Our architecture is comprised of a backbone layer and a classification head, with the backbone being a five layer TCM. We train five models, and in some of them, we augment the training data. And we also experiment with fine tuning and training the TCM backbone as an autoencoder using an unannotated set. So, in general, as you can see, the results can improve a lot. But some of the highlights are that the site training subset has the highest results and that the pre-training strategies do not improve the results for the site training set at all. But for the performance set and Boagmula, they do. And finally, that the tendencies for recall are generally higher, which could be due to false negatives in the data or that it's simply easier to determine the presence of an error rather than the lack of it. So for future work, we would like to improve in the problem definition and data protocol we would like to improve the synthetic mistake engine, and also we'd like to explore different architectures. And thank you so much for your attention. There's quite some more to discuss. So if you're interested in performance assessment, please stop by the posting. Thank you.